What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. We got some big news all around here today. Kim Jong-un, the North Korean president, departs from Russia with some parting gifts. And we'll go over that here today after a six-day trip in Russia. We'll reveal what we know here so far. We're going to be getting more information here on that. We'll talk about that here today. Um, I'm also going to give you a clip here right now about what former President Donald Trump says about what Vladimir Putin, Russian president, said about him. Interesting. Take a listen to this and let me know your thoughts here in the comments. Here we go. I want to ask you about something President Putin said about you this week. I don't know if you've seen it. This was very recent. President Putin said, quote, we surely hear that Mr. Trump says he will resolve all burning issues within several days, including the Ukrainian crisis. We cannot help but feel happy about it. What do you well, make of that? Do you because, welcome well, his support? I like that he said that because that means what I'm saying is right. I would get him into a room. I'd get Zelensky into a room. Then I'd bring them together and I'd have a deal worked out. I would get a deal worked out. It would have been a lot easier before it started. Essentially for four years, I kept them from doing anything. Because you know what? I will tell you this. I've never said this. Ukraine was the apple of his eye. I said, don't ever do it. Don't ever do it. He would have never done it. But again, oil prices. He wouldn't have done it because of me, but oil prices. The prices were so high that he had so much money. So he had all this money to prosecute the war. The one who drove up the prices was Biden. Given that President Putin has bombed maternity wards, 20,000 kids it's kidnapped from Ukraine by Russia, terrible. mass graves. Yeah. Do you welcome his support, his all but endorsement? Look, I had a very good relationship with him, and yet nobody was tougher in Russia than me. I stopped Nord Stream 2. You never heard of Nord Stream 2. That was the pipeline until I got involved. I said Nord Stream 2, people that were sophisticated, Military people and political people never heard of Nord Stream 2. I had it ended. The pipeline was dead. Biden came in and he approved it. There was nobody tougher than me with Russia. And yet I got along with Putin. Let me tell you, I got along with him really well. And that's a good thing, not a bad thing. He's got 1,700 nuclear mi missiles, and so do we. But look, that's a good thing. Getting along is okay. But I got along through strength. And the war would have never happened. The war would have never happened. Now what's happened, it's so bad. The oil price is so high, it's hard to get it stopped. The oil price is so high. When he goes above 50 and $60 a barrel, he makes a lot of money on the war. Now, it's a humanitarian thing. It's a lot of different reasons. But I will get that war stopped. Yeah, let me know your thoughts here in the comments. And, uh, you know, getting the war stopped going to be harder than um, a lot of people think. Russia says they're not leaving without Ukraine's land, a large portion of the Eastern Front, some of, a lot of which uh, that they don't even control uh, anymore. And um, this includes the people that live on the land, the resources there, the oil in the land, the natural you know, resources there. And this also includes the people that live there so that they could tax them. And so remember that they can also have those people fight in their future wars against potentially against Ukraine in the future. Remember here that, so first of all, they have a draft that is anywhere from 18 to 30 so that they can literally have those people then fight against Ukrainian people potentially in the future. Remember that in the past, Ukraine or Russia had a pact, a, a, an actual treaty that was signed that said if Ukraine gave back the nukes that were on Ukrainian land uh, after Ukraine separated from Russia and the Soviet Union, USSR, that um, remember that Russia had the codes for them, but Ukraine had them on their land after they separated. Ukraine gave them back. Russia said, if you give them back to us, we will never invade Ukraine. Yeah, so a lot of good that uh, pact, that treaty 
that Russia signed did because they literally just, you know, went against their word. So Russia's word is only as good as their word, which they completely just, uh, you know, went against. So nonetheless, they didn't hold up to their word. They just invaded them anyways. Yes, <laughs> let me know your thoughts here on that. The other thing here is that, you know, if, you know, we've seen the same thing here in World War II with Hitler. Hitler signed the treaties after countries surrendered, and then he bulldozed right over them and just continued to take over more countries and more land right after he signed the treaties. Again, you know, we're seeing the same thing here. People think that even if somehow the war was negotiated to end, how long would Putin even stop? Again, we've seen him take over um, Crimea. He's leaked plans to take over Moldova and Belarus and encompass us all into the Russia and to put together the former Soviet Union USSR. Okay. Will he stop at just this section of Ukraine? And Remember here, if you listen to what former President Donald Trump said, the high oil prices are funding his war, and look at what is happening now. The OPEC plus Saudi Arabia and Russia have um, their overall 3 million barrels per day cuts have sent world diesel prices, oil prices, and gas prices soaring here. Yeah, remember that uh, this affects prices everywhere, the United States, Europe, China, everywhere. And um, oil just hit its highest level of the year. Some analysts expect they return to $100 a barrel. And we're actually almost there already, depending on the type of oil. WTI crude almost at $91 a barrel. Brent crude at $93 a barrel, $93, $93, $94 a barrel. Mervin crude at $96 a barrel. We're a hop, skip, and a jump away from almost $100 a barrel, guys. Yikes. This is despite U.S. gas prices being almost at the highest they've ever been. From the U.S. energy information here, our U.S. Weekly field production of crude oil. There's a chart you can actually see this. I show this from time to time on my channel. Here was our highest pre pandemic production of oil 13.1 million barrels per day. This is thousands of barrels, so you equate to, mi to millions, right? 13.1 millions was right before the pandemic. The pandemic came, everything dropped, okay? And, you know, again, this is pre-pandemic, so this was 2020 when Trump was president. It dropped still while Trump was president all the way down 9.7 million. Okay, again, still while Trump was president. I don't know if this matters or not, but again, you know, I just tell the numbers here, tell the truth. Okay. And then Biden became president somewhere around here in January at around 11,000, 11 million, you know, 11 thousands. So 11 million barrels per day. Okay. And then now we're all the way up to 12.9 million. Okay. So we're literally almost back up to the height, the highest the U.S. production has ever been. You can see the spike up. We're almost back to it. But nonetheless, Saudi Arabia cuts has negated this. There, there are 3 million barrels per day cuts and remember that oil is traded on a global basis, a global basis. And um, it's a, oil is like a stock market-like exchange. And we're seeing this here. And remember, this helps fund Russia and the Saudis. And look at U.S. gas prices here uh, climbing steadily, climbing steadily here. Um, up to 387 uh, in the national average here. Again, depends on where you are, but so I'm sure a lot of places are over four. Diesel at 457 here. A week ago was 447. A month ago was 
34. So it's gone up 20, almost 25 cents here in a month. And if you're in California, the largest populated state, God bless you, because look at these California gas prices, 565 for regular gas, nearing $6 a gallon, premium gas at $6 a gallon, and diesel at $6.33, $6.33 for diesel. My, my, my. And remember that diesel price affects your food prices and everything else that's shipped to a store. A month ago, diesel was $5.69. We're around that to $5.70. Now, diesel prices are $6.33. That's an increase of $0.63.64 cents in one month for diesel. $0.64. Cents, it's gone up in one month. This is the largest populated state in the U.S. That's how much diesel has gone up. And regular gas, one month, has gone up from 518 to 565. What is that, almost 50 cents? Wow. And again, California, the largest populated states in, state in the U.S. It's like 50 million people there. And this is despite the U.S. producing just a tick away from the most oil we've ever produced. This is the problem, really, with oil and gas, is that it's going to consistently go up almost no matter what the U.S. does. It's an absolute nightmare. Yeah. Let me know your thoughts here in the comments. I'll keep you up to date here. If you haven't yet, subscribe down below. Click the bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos that come out here on our YouTube channel at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks for liking and sharing these videos. Click here to see the new assassination attempt that just happened and what Russia just said about North Korea striking the U.S. Or click here to see about mask mandates and the new uh, C-19 vaccines. A lot going on here. Click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.